What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today Apple has released the third beta of iOS 18 to registered developers. We will talk about the public beta in a little bit. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside of iOS 18 developer beta 3. It came in at 1.44 gigabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro right here. We got quite a bit to talk about, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that you'll notice upon updating to iOS 18 is that we got a couple of new changes with dark mode icons. So this is what light mode icons looks like. And you can see they look pretty good, but if we switch to dark mode, you'll see a third-party app, ChatGBT, right here has gotten dark. So I'm guessing Apple has decided to just take artificial intelligence into account and change white to black, for example, as you can see right here. And if it's like a full background, then just change that. But you could also see Instagram right here. You now tints dark when you change from light to dark. So that's just going to encourage the app developer a little bit more just to update the app just to support dark mode icons. And unfortunately, if I were to switch to tinted icons and then to change the colors a little bit, and for some reason, okay, there's a picker. All right, so if I were to do this, you'll see that still, we still have the little bug, but they do come back, which is a little bit better behavior than what we had before. Thank God Apple has finally fixed that bug a little bit partially inside of this beta. All right, the next thing inside this beta is we got a brand new emoji picker. So the emojis are a lot bigger now, which I think is a little bit better of a change. And you can also see we got a rounded corners for this search emoji. So this has remained largely unchanged right here. You can see I could just search that. But yeah, the emoji picker looks a lot better now. We do not have any gen emojis quite yet, but at least we got the brand new emoji picker, which I think looks pretty oh, nice. This thing has to do with the lock screen. So in the previous beta, we had a previous bug where you could not configure your widgets right here. As you can see, you can now configure them just by tapping on them. You could not configure them at all. But we also have a little additional change. Widgets that only have one parameter, which I personally do not like this change as a widget developer, is that they'll now show up as a full-on menu. So if I tap on this widget, you can see right there. I'm gonna show you what an app intent widget looks like. Right here, I have an app intent widget, and it still goes back to the old one where you gotta tap widget theme and press choose. But this is just with intent definition configurations widgets, where if I go back to device stats storage, you can see I do not know what I'm configuring. So hopefully Apple reverts this change because as a widget developer, I do not like this change really at all, especially since it's consistent with app intent widgets where you got to actually press choose. So yeah, that's just my take on this change inside of beta three. Hopefully Apple fixes it. All right, the next thing has to do with the control center. So inside of control center settings, you can now see that we have a little bit more of a point of having a separate section for control center inside of iOS 18. As you can see, we now have a tip right here that shows customized control center. It shows you that there's now a new way to customize control center. We just swipe down and then press this plus button right here. So I just think Apple should probably remove this entire section within iOS 19 or iOS 20 because having this as a separate section is kind of stupid to be honest. And along with Control Center, it is now a lot smoother to customize your Control Center widgets. So if I were to move them around like this, you could see they're no longer glitching out randomly very weirdly. They now function how I would expect it to. For example, if I move this up here, it now functions and moves it right there where I want it to. And if I were to do that, it gently moves down and this is just a lot better experience inside of iOS 18. So I'm glad that Apple has finally made the control center experience a lot better. Another change with the control center settings is that now we no longer need to tap and hold to configure something. So I just tap on Wi-Fi right here, whereas before I need to tap and hold and then I would get into this screen right here. And additionally, for some that does not have a context menu, you just tap it and then it just turns off just like that. And it also shows some little arrows right here that represents that you just tap and you can just customize. And to just turn it off, you just tap on the icon right here. Pretty easy just to do. But yeah, network settings has been slightly adjusted here. So the next change has to do with the Photos app. So inside a photo before, it would round the corners and then just add some additional padding, which kind of looked weird to be honest. But now if you just tap it, it no longer has the padding. And it's more like iOS 17 now, which I think is a lot better functionality. It feels less buggy, less cumbersome. And with the video player, if you just tap right here, it just hides everything. And you can see we still have our control bar right here. It's just on the bottom instead of being like right here with the rounded corners. It was just kind of weird just having the rounded corners right there inside the Photos app. But yeah, I really like that Apple has finally updated this Photos app, making it look a lot better. Now, next change has to do with the podcast app. So we got a brand new splash screen inside the podcast 
where it shows off precise sharing, faster search, and more playback control. So it looks a lot nicer, and podcast basically just the exact same as it was in beta 2. Now next change has to do with the maps app icon. So we have a brand new dark icon. So it now shows all the full colors, which I think looks a little bit nicer instead of it just being darker. However, it doesn't reflect what Maps app is really. So if I were to go into Maps app, you could see this is what it looks like in dark mode and this is what the icon looks like in dark mode. It doesn't show the dark grass, so I think Apple should honestly revert this icon right here because it's kind of weird that it's just light like this when all the others are dark. Now the next change has to do with the shortcuts app. So if I were to press on these three dots right here, you can see it does a zoom in animation now for navigation when tapping on these three dots, which looked a little bit nicer before I would just slide over, but now it just zooms in when pressing these three dots and it just utilizes a new API brought over to iOS 18. Now the next thing has to do with the dynamic island flashlight. So if I were to turn it on right here, you can see it is now redesigned. So first of all, the flashlight is now more fine than before, whereas you can now freely adjust it and it's also now a lot easier to switch it from full angle and just going straight ahead and doing full brightness in one specific area. Now, our next change inside of Beta 3 has to do with the fitness app. So if I were to open up the fitness app, we have a brand new splash screen right here. It shows you that we have a customizable summary, flexible goals, training load, and all new fitness plus stuff. So this is just brand new prompt inside of iOS 18. Beta 3 looks really nice and just shows you what's uh, in Now the next change has to do with a new RCS section. So we have a dedicated section for RCS if we go in here. For now, it's just a toggle, but I'm sure something will be right here. Otherwise, why would there be a entire section for RCS messaging? Well, I have to see and wait, but it's no longer just a toggle for now. But yeah, that is all of the changes that we have inside of iOS 18 Beta 3. Thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. We are super close to 2,000 subscribers, so let's see if we can get to 2,000 subscribers. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!